What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. This is the Bretonian Kingdom of Bretonia Battle Standard Bearer on Royal Pegasus. Just built him up in an epic hour and a half long live stream and wanted to give you my thoughts on him now that I've, I've cut the camera, I stopped filming, I had a couple of minutes to gather my thoughts and uh, talk about him, the design of him and where uh, Games Workshop is going with a lot of these miniatures and uh, I just want to let you know if you ha if you want to catch the insanity of building this thing it is one of the most difficult builds I've ever done and uh, I don't want that to sound you know superfluous but there is uh, there is like some madness in having the reins be like three different pieces one connecting from the mouth one connecting like, see, like, this reins isn't even, it, it won't even stay in the guy's hand. From the first rein to, uh, all the way up to the guy's hands. And then, uh, another part of the reins going from, from the bit in the horse's mouth all the way up to here. And then the fourth part, which is actually his hand that's connected to this, making it all connect together. It's just madness and if you're a new painter if you're a new hobbyist if you're a kid getting into the hobby and you love knights in shining armor and you say i want to get bretonia and uh your generous wealthy parents buy you one of these to go along with your army box you're gonna find yourself frustrated because if this is one of the first models you've ever built just the reins itself is is uh just hard to get through so uh, i did mention in the live stream that uh, with Link's Lord that the reins aesthetic is one that they're porting over a lot they're using it in all of their cavalry now instead of just having it before where um, remember the old Bretonian knights where they're basically like holding onto their horses with their legs and they're holding a shield in one hand and the other hand they, they're holding a lance like this is more realistic, right? He's holding the reins, he's rearing back, he's uh, actively controlling this royal pegasus. Just from the design perspective though, the implementation of these reins is, excuse me, it's something else. And if you have never built any of these models with the reins, like if you don't have any Cities of Sigmar Cavaliers or uh, any of the Soulblight Gravelord Blood Knights that came out a while back, then you might be thinking, what's the big deal? It's just a couple of uh, thin pieces of plastic that you have to finagle around. But the, the big deal is that the angle that you are able to um, correctly position the reins at is at this point in the model, which was like the second half of assembling this thing, was more uh, reliant upon the model not shifting in any ways. You know what I mean? Like if the horse's head uh, drooped a little bit while the glue was drying, then that would affect the angle at which you would place the bit in the mouth and then curving it around would have taken more slack, which leaves less to connect the pieces. Like this is the only part of the model where five pieces are working together simultaneously to create a very tiny surface area connection in each, uh, each connection point. Link's Lord did mention that the the wise thing would be to just glue one part at a time and then let it dry before moving on to the next one. And that is true. That would be uh, that would save a lot of trouble. But if you are somebody who steps away from the table and you're not able to watch the glue dry or to just pop your head in and check to make sure that everything is fine, you could have a situation like the droopy horse head where the uh, weight of the model, like these wings, just drag the piece down slowly, almost unnoticeably and imperceptibly. But at the end of the day, they're going to create um, too much of an un... What am I trying to say? Unpredictable um, surface area to work with. I find that that's why I like to glue these things together fast. Not only because it makes great content for my channel, but also because you're able to... Um, build the model from the ground up and I could see like that the reins were going to be an issue for me just looking at the instructions I, I knew that the reins were going to be an issue I think the best part about this is the guy looks like Steve Irwin with a mustache and um, 
it's great to, to paint a Pegasus again. So I already did the unboxing of the miniature. If you haven't seen that video, then uh, it really is the perfect companion piece to this one. Or rather, this video is the perfect summation of what I uh, talked about in the first video. Bretonia having new models, fantastic. I think if Games Workshop had gotten all their ducks in line, they should have released this or not just this, but uh, on day one. They also released Pegasus Knights, I think. And this was the only other model that they released that was new. I'm not sure. I, they they might have also released a box of the Peasant uh, Men-at-Arms and Bowmen. But uh, all of us who've been around the block a couple of times, we want to see the new stuff. We want the new miniatures. And this $70 box for one figure was um, all you get at the beginning. We're not even sure when we're going to get the damsel. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the, the grail damsel holding up the cup or uh, Lady Elise Duchard on her unicorn, which looks absolutely beautiful. And I, I cannot wait to add that to my collection. Uh, it seems like Games Workshop is doing some really great things design-wise, like taking a chance and making a battle standard bearer on a flying creature like this. And uh, at the same time, they don't have the ability to produce and manufacture these miniatures fast enough to satisfy the uh, the obvious want that a lot of gamers have. The old world scratches an itch that a lot of people, and I'm sure Games Workshop didn't even think was that big of a deal, or they would have devoted more resources into making sure that there was adequate adequate product to go around on the uh, launch date. But what I mean by that is Games Workshop is constantly innovating. They're um, always thinking ahead, moving the narrative forward and uh, making new models and new units and uh, developing new campaigns like the Dawnbringers for Age of Sigmar. They're constantly building on the bones of what came before them. I think in so doing, they forget how much of a solid connection, emotional connection, many of us have with Warhammer Fantasy Battles. That game was, to many of us, our introduction to the tabletop hobby. And those, a lot of us, just as many if not more, have gotten into it through 40k. Warhammer Fantasy was our way of uh, bringing all of those fantasy stories that we used to love to read and grow up with, uh, bringing them to life. The uh, Lord of the Rings before the movies came out, it was our way of putting like hordes of armies onto the tabletop. And uh, I had so much fun lining up my little goblins while my friend lined up his plastic high elves on the kitchen table at his house. Like we didn't have a game mat. We didn't have scenery. We had his his kitchen table mat that we stack some books on and um to simulate hills right it was just the best thing it was the most fun that i had and i i still think about those memories and i have like a warm feeling in my heart from remembering all of that so games workshop is tapping into that now by introducing new gamers to the uh, concepts of a fantasy war game with uh, rank upon rank of uh, soldiers throwing themselves at the enemy, but they're also able to revisit by uh, by offering up those old sculpts on the made to order on their website. They're really tapping into that nostalgia, that uh, pleasant nostalgia that we have. So, uh, basically, what I'm trying to say with uh, what I'm trying to say is that I love. The Kingdom of Bretonia. I love the old world, the fluff and the fiction, and I really hope Games Workshop is able to capitalize and um, to not just brush this aside as like a space hulk or um, even like a specialist game like Necromunda or uh, Aeronautica Imperialis. Um, I want them to make the old world just as big and expansive as 40k, as Age of Sigmar. Because when you do that, hey, guess what? Those legacy armies that we were all upset about losing, they come back. Kislev appears. Nippon and Cathay and everything else we wanted to see uh, with Warhammer 
in the old world. All of that comes back. Like Cubicle 7 just announced that they're doing a role-playing game set in the old world when they've already got Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, which is set in the old world. But but they're doing a, a, a role-playing game, a tabletop role-playing game that takes place in this period, this time period, like 200 years before uh, what was the current day, before they blew it all up. So uh, the need is there, the want is there, and the love for this franchise is there. We just got to make sure that uh, we're able to keep up with it. So as, as they say, vote with your wallets, folks. If you want more old world, then uh, you don't have to go out and buy everything and bankrupt your family. But you could just keep interacting, keep having uh, good impressions and um, vocalizing yourself on Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, on all the social media, go on the Reddit forums, post up your old models, talk about how excited you are. I think Games Workshop is going to find out for any of them that still don't believe how popular the setting was and how much we have been yearning to have a game like this. Anyways, 11.11, make a wish, y'all. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the like button before you go and see you on the Discord. Laters, sacra bleu, allons-y, woo!